welcome to Greenbow Gathering. Um, Bobby Allen is off today, having a little emergency situation, but he's in good shape. Hopefully, uh, have him back next week. We've got a special guest here from Kentucky Fish and Wildlife, Rick Morrow, here at Greenbow Lake. And we got some special music by Ann Stevens. Uh, today's show, we're going to talk about wildlife, our wildlife management plan, uh, partnership with Fish and Wildlife. We'll, we'll be right back. How would you like to add a couple of days to your summer vacation? You don't have to travel hundreds of miles in a car. Just head to a nearby Kentucky State Park. Choose from lodge room or reserve a modern cabin in the woods. Leave the car keys behind as you go camp, boat, hike, swim, or eat in our on-site restaurants. Unplug from your busy life for a long weekend or an entire week. Make your reservations now at visitkyparks.com. Whatever your passion, we have a park for that. with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Welcome back to Greenbow Gathering. It's Kerry Lyle. I've got a special guest here with me today, Rick Marr from Fish and Wildlife. Rick, good to have you here. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about our wildlife management plan here at Greenbow Lake with Rick in partnership with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. First, I want to talk about a couple of things we got going on here at the park, Rick. We got uh, this weekend our Colonel Bill Williams uh, Heritage Music Festival. Saturday starts at 5 o'clock, free admission at the amphitheater. We've got uh, the Van Sickle Brothers, Downtown King, uh, the Greenup County uh, Band. Tracy Walker, Larry Whit, Blue Eyed Soul, and Jay Flippin. Uh, really good blues event in honor of Colonel Bill Williams, who is a legendary blues performer here from right here in Greenup County. Uh, we've got a really good fall getaway package going on right now, Rick, for the family. It's got a, fa a family fall getaway for $165 Sunday through Thursday, uh, two nights lodging, half a day pontoon rental, and a s'mores kit. Pretty good deal. And then we got a fisherman's getaway. $140 Sunday through Thursday, two nights lodging, two day canoe rental, and a free continental breakfast. So it be the time of year the fish start to hit. Yeah, they, they, yeah. it's about, to, about time for them. With the solar temperatures. Bass will start hitting hopefully yes. again this fall. Yeah. We, they caught some pretty good bass this spring uh, mm -hmm. out of the lake. Yeah, I know you send pictures of them. It's yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to talk about our wildlife management plan, Rick. Uh, uh, we, you've been working on this for quite a while, 10 years plus, and uh, we're, we're just now starting a, a, new, a new part of the plan, which is introducing bow hunting to the park. Um, talk a little bit about how we, how we developed this and, and some of the things that, we ha that we're doing to, to make it a really nice attraction for the park as well as the management of the, of the deer herd here at Greenbow Lake. Okay, um, well initially, and, and this has gone back a good number of years, um, um, we had a situation on Greenbow where the deer herd was, was more abundant than we really wanted it to be. And well, the situation we were seeing with, with having too many deer was uh, that the deer size was fairly small. Um, there just was not a lot of food for the number of deer that were out here. So their physical condition kind of dropped a notch and, and their weights were low and they just weren't in, in the best of shape. Um, additionally, because uh, we had so many more deer than really what the natural habitat could support, they were doing some damage to the natural habitat. Um, the heavy grazing pressure um, was really damaging to a lot of plants that grow in the understory of the forest. Um, the, the greatest evidence you could see of this was if you looked into the woods, you would see what would be called a browse line, which is simply that basically all the plants, all the young trees, ferns, etc., cetera, um, would basically be grazed and missing up to the height that a deer could reach. So we had more deer uh, that was, than was desirable from a habitat standpoint on Greenbelt. So initially we introduced um, uh, in January, each year 
the quota gun hunt. And we felt like that this was pretty effective. We did it in January during weekdays so it wouldn't conflict with other users of the park. And um, we felt this was pretty effective in uh, reducing the deer herd a bit. We did see increases in the deer weights and some recovery of the natural habitat. Um, but with just that one two-day hunt, it, we didn't quite get the deer population to where we wanted it. We still needed a bit of additional harvest, and I don't think we we're ever going to get it just with simply that hunt. Because we can only draw too many hunters for the two days. If you get too many hunters in the woods, it becomes, becomes unsafe. So that's when we went ahead working with you. You were a great supporter of this and uh, introduced the bow hunting um, uh, in recent years. And that seems to be working out pretty good too. And, and we think it will really help to get our deer herd where we want it to be. We uh, pick those dates and we pick them every year. We meet in the summertime and we kind of look at the dates, uh, the availability of the lodge and, and, uh, and uh, good dates that coincide with the deer herd population from the biology standpoint. And mm -hmm. those dates this year, September 30th through October 3rd, October 28th through 31st, and November 11th through the 14th. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a pretty good price on them. It's $225 per person. That's for a three day hunt, three nights lodging, and three breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners. Pretty it might be worth it even if you didn't hunt. Huh? That's <laughs> right, that's right. That's a pretty good deal. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, talking about the dates and and, and the deer during that time frame, what, what, what do the deer, uh, for the folks that aren't really uh, knowledgeable about the deer habitat and what happens during that time frame, let's talk about their activity level. Well, uh, you know, the way the deer will be behaving during each of those hunts is a bit different. Um, the first hunt is September 30, October 3rd. Um, the, rut, the rut, which is the breeding season, won't have really kicked in yet. So um, foremost on the deer's mind will be simply eating as much food as it can possibly eat. Uh, the bucks to get into, be in as good a shape as possible to when they get into the rut. Because once they get into the rut, they won't be feeding much. They'll be running all over the place, chasing after does. Um, so during each of those times, you're, the way you would hunt would probably change a little bit. During that first time, I think you would really key in on food supply. And on this particular uh, park, because it is mainly forested, and, and, and during the fall, deer really heavily eat mast, which is different nuts from the trees. Uh, what we've noticed this year is our beech trees uh, have a, are really have a lot of nuts this year. So I think for that first hunt, a person might focus on hunting around the areas that have beaches that are producing nuts. The later two hunts, the rut is getting underway, and um, and so then I think your classic pattern of where you see a lot of buck sign and scrapes and rubs and so on, and it would be the way to go to kind of you know key in on the activity associated with the rut. That's uh, interesting. I, I know that uh, from our standpoint here at Greenbow Lake, uh, we've got we've got quite a few deer on the park, and I've seen some pretty good sized bucks. Um, as far as uh, uh, the number of hunters, Rick, uh, we've got a we've got a limit on on those for our bow hunt, um, and that's for safety reasons, but it's also for the biology aspect of, of harvesting. You want to talk a little bit about the rationale there? Yeah, the the bow hunts are they're pretty new, so to an extent, we're kind of learning as we go, and. Um, so we, we know that the, the quota hunt, the gun quota hunt in itself is not an adequate harvest. But uh, we don't know exactly yet what the, what the ideal harvest will be. So as we collect data from these initial hunts, we're very confident we're not going to grossly over harvest them. We don't think that's going to happen with just additional bow hunting. But we may have to tinker a little bit. We're thinking that three bow hunts will probably be about what we want. But we may find the hunters are a bit more successful or a bit less successful, and we may have to play with things in the future. Maybe we'll draw, uh, if we feel like we're getting plenty of harvest, we might um, reduce the number of people drawn for the quota hunt, or perhaps even not have the gun quota hunt and go to all bow hunts. So we'll, 
we'll learn as we go, but we think we're hitting her pretty close at this time. Pretty good partnership with Fish and Wildlife, being able to do this on, on our Kentucky State Parks. Um, gives you a really good avenue to study the habitat, and it also helps us manage the habitat health-wise health and also bring in folks when we're traditionally kind of slow to recreate on the park. Right. And uh, that's, that's, what, that's what we're here for, we feel like. Uh, uh, to me, it, it, you know, it sounds like a, a win-win all around. I mean, the, the park benefits from greater recreational use of the, of the park and of the lodge and the facilities. Uh, the deer herd benefits by getting it uh, within the level that the natural habitat can support. Other wildlife benefits, when deer overgraze the habitat, it reduces habitat for other things like forest songbirds, rough grouse, things of that nature, because those shrubs, which they utilize for their habitat, are not there, the deer are eating them all up. So it just seems to, to be a win-win uh, all around. Uh, we're, we're, we're very fortunate to have you as a partnership fish and wildlife. I, I know you're passionate about it as well as, as I am as far as the management aspect of it. We also got a turkey uh, wildlife management package that we yeah. initiated this past year. You want to talk a little bit about the, the birds? Yeah. Now the turkey, um, we you know we just noticed, uh, or you have noticed from working here. We've noticed from working out here also. But you all have just an outstanding turkey population. So you know the turkey isn't something where you. It's not as critical to hunt them as say the deer herd because they won't do as much damage to the habitat. But you just have so many, we really felt that some harvest of the turkey really wouldn't hurt either. So we felt like, you know, that that, that surplus numbers of turkeys is available to have some hunter harvest. And again, to just create more opportunity on the park. So that's why we implemented the turkey hunting. And uh, I'm just thinking back to when we were here last spring and that the first turkey hunt ever. Yes. And that fellow was up there hunting. And yes. <laughs> He had them calling from five different places. Yeah, he yeah. Yeah. had them from all over, and he was so sh he was almost shaking. He was, he was shaking. Yeah, he, he was excited <laughs> about it. Yeah, he was like, man. That man. was uh, Matt from uh, National Federation yeah. of Wild Turkey in Indiana, yeah. and he, he he's he was really yeah. excited about it. And we're, yeah, we're, being kind of a flatlander, I think it freaked him out a little bit having to climb that big hill. Yeah. To, to you. And then he was winded, and then he missed the bird, and he just just what turkey hunt does to you. Just, yeah. It can be so exciting and and, and so challenging, and, and he, he, he loved it. He enjoyed himself, but I think the turkey got the best. Yes, <laughs> I, I think so, too. Yeah. Those dates are uh, December 6th through the 8th, April 13th through the 17th, and April 27th through May 1st. And those last two dates are important dates because of the way the turkeys are responding. Yeah, well, see, the first hunt is, uh, is one of our fall hunts. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is very different than the spring hunts. In the fall, uh, any turkey is legal, and or gobbler. And um, uh, it, it is not the mating season, so the hunting is different than in the spring. In the fall, you're really keying in on food sources, just like uh, that first deer hunt. Again, because I think we have an outstanding beach crop this year, I think the turkeys will be in the beaches too. Good chance of it if the beaches aren't beaten up by that. By the December. And uh, so during the fall, you, you can take any bird and you're keying in on where the turkeys are feeding. Those April hunts, they're, they're, the, they're the breeding season hunt for turkeys, and that's where you have the classic uh, calling to a gobbler using hen calls to try to pull that gobbler into it. And they're pretty, they're pretty smart, just like the deer are, huh? I mean, uh, it's a great theory. You know, oh geez, baiting season just sound like a hand, they come running in. Anymore that doesn't happen much. I mean, I'm not saying you can't call them in, you can. But they rarely come in and run. It's many of them they'll gobble back to you, but they aren't coming because they've been messed with before. It's like you come to me or, or eventually I'm just leaving. So it's tough. It, it's quite a challenge. That's probably one of the reasons our our birds are so thick because they haven't been managed like we we're starting to manage them now. Yeah, uh, you know, um, they, they, they just haven't been hunted previously. But, but one notion that anyone trying to hunt here ought to get out of their head 
is that you're you're hunting these uh, naive park animals. Yeah, that's that you're not, and I can tell you because I, I I had been drawn before for the quota hunt for deer in January, and I'm telling you these deer are as wary as about any I've encountered, and that's because even though they a lot of them live on the park, there's hunting going on on the all around the park, all around. So it's not like they've never seen a hunter before. Right. And when you start putting hunters in the woods, if they've been around the block, in other words, if they're not this year's deer, and they've seen hunters before, they know what's going on. They see those cars parking and those people coming in before light, and they go on high alert. It's truly and amazing how, right. how, how intelligent they really yeah, are. Yeah. And, uh, and the turkey, they, you know, starting out, they could be a little easier, but that won't last. <laughs> they're going to be they're going to be a challenge, you know. The uh, packages are $150 per person. That's two days of hunting, uh, two nights lodging, and two breakfasts, two lunches, and two dinners, which is another pretty good deal for for our, for our turkey hunt. Uh, we're going to we're going to take a, a quick break. Um, we'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit more about about our wildlife management food plots, Rick, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk some more about uh, maybe have Ann Steven to sing for us. Be right back. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital is among the top 5% of the nation for patient experience. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital has received the Outstanding Patient Experience Award for four consecutive years. To contact the hospital, call the care line at 833-2273. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, on a mission for the good health of you and your family. What do golf and camping have in common? You can do both at a Kentucky State Park. That's because a Kentucky State Park is your one-stop vacation destination. You can have all kinds of fun. Hike, bike, boat, fish, swim, or do nothing at all. Check out our golf packages. Reserve a campsite, a lodge room, or a cabin. Make your reservations now at visitkyparks.com. Whatever your passion, we have a park for that. Welcome back. Greenbow Gathering. This is Carrie Lau along with our special guest here, Rick Morrow from Fish and Wildlife. Rick, let's talk about the food plots that we're, uh, we're going to try to we're going to implement here at Greenbow Lake. Uh, well, uh, Greenbow has a lot of it. That's why it's, it's well suited, one of the most well suited parts for a wildlife management and hunting program. But um, virtually all of its acres are forested. Now, now that's good. That's that's good habitat for a lot of species. And when the acorns are falling, food is in abundance. Only problem is we don't have a lot of acorns every year. And even when we do, they only last for part of the year. They don't supply food the rest of the year. Um, yeah. Wildlife, deer especially, have to eat all year round. So when those acorns aren't available they're looking for other food sources. And one important food source is comes from fields, uh, grasses, crops, that sort of thing. And we feel like um, uh, to provide some additional food um, with the limited open land the park does have, it would be very helpful to have some food plots for wildlife. And this would help, especially if we get the numbers at a good level, that's an additional food source, so we should see the deer health increase even more. The does will be healthier, fawn survival would be greater, size of the, the bucks would be improved, but just be a healthier deer overall. And again, even less pressure on the natural habitat. So that's what we got going. Uh, we've been a big supporter of that. You know, we're working together this year, and it looks like it's coming together uh, this fall. You all, we working with you. We yes. have plans for four different food plots, um, about two acres uh, total, one one and three quarter acre, and uh, we're going to start out trying a mix of uh, of uh, wheat and uh, turnips and clover. That's going that's going to increase the like you said the health of the deer, which will also help the other natural habitat, mm -hmm. uh, birds, uh, all the other type of habitat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, what we're talking about planting, uh, turkeys will benefit, deer will benefit, um, a lot of songbirds will benefit from that wheat when it's actually producing wheat next year. 
uh, goldfinches uh, will really key in on uh, quite a bit. Um, so it will help considerably. And then also, once again, we're taking a lot of that heavy deer grazing pressure. If they're not, if they're eating in these food plots, they're probably not out hammering uh, your understory shrubs and, and so on. And so that provides a lot of habitat for a lot of our horse songbirds is, is that understory shrub layer. And that should be healthier with the deer keying in more on these food plots than on that. So at least taking some pressure off that. Um, in, in your role at Fish and Wildlife, you, you do a lot of, you are with a lot of the public land hunts. You want to tell the folks about some of the stuff you got coming up? Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, bow season is about to kick off this Saturday on virtually all our wildlife management areas. Um, our wildlife management areas in general in Kentucky and in this part of the state, we've got, we've got good deer herds. I mean, we've got, we've got their numbers pretty much where we want them to be. Um, we've got healthy deer herds. We've got balanced sex ratios. A lot of older age bucks out there. The, the, these areas are virtually all available for bow hunting, which then comes in this Saturday. I'm sure they're hunted, but the pressure is not overwhelming, so you can find some good opportunity. Um, another hunt I, I would really like to mention uh, is on Grayson Lake. We, we have a, a special youth gun hunt, first weekend in November every year. It's an open sign, in, it's a sign up hunt. and. Um, only about 100 kids come out, but we, we have room for more. That's uh, that's an awesome opportunity right there for our youth. Um, they can go on the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife uh, website and figure, find more information about the hunts in the public areas and public management areas, and then you can also go on our parks uh, website to find out more about our turkey and, uh, and a bow hunt and wildlife management plan here at Green Bow Lake. Um, Rick, we really appreciate you coming by, and I appreciate everything you're doing to help yeah, I, us yeah, I appreciate get, what you're get doing. Green Bow yeah. Lake, uh, our wildlife management plan, in effect. I mean, it's it's a really great partnership we have, and I appreciate it a lot. Well, uh, there's no doubt that you've been one of the prime movers on this whole wildlife management. So, I mean, I know we could not have done what we've done without you, without your efforts. Well, you know you I appreciate that, Rick. I really do. Uh, we'll be right back with Ann Stevens uh, doing a special performance at Screenbow Gather. First of People's Bank has served customers one at a time since 1932. First of People's Bank, a full service bank with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations.
What do golf and camping have in common? You can do both at a Kentucky State Park. That's because a Kentucky State Park is your one-stop vacation destination. You can have all kinds of fun. Hike, bike, boat, fish, swim, or do nothing at all. Check out our golf packages. Reserve a campsite, a lodge room, or a cabin. Make your reservations now at visitkyparks.com. Whatever your passion, we have a park for that. First of People's Bank has served customers one at a time since 1932. First of People's Bank, a full-service bank with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the Home Office. Come visit any of our six locations. Welcome back to Green Bowl Gathering. Wow, Ann Stevens, man. I'm telling you what, she is unbelievable. That, uh, our our, our uh, talent in Greenup County in our region for the cultural arts and the music is pretty amazing. You know what, Rick? We're, we're very yeah. fortunate. Um, I wanted to touch base real quick with everybody and remind them of the dates, September 30th through October 3rd, October 28th through the 31st, and November 11th through the 14th are the dates for our wildlife management bow hunts. Um, Rick, I know all the hunters out there are thinking one thing. What about the deer herd and the size of the 
bucks. Uh, well, in, in Kentucky, we're in a really good situation. I feel like we've been managing our deer herd very well for a long time. Um, we've had the one buck limit uh, for uh, over a decade now. Um, since we implemented that, we keep seeing uh, the percentage of older age bucks in our herd just keeps going higher and higher. And I can just tell you just from, from working in this area that in terms of large bucks, it's never been better than what it is right now in like the last two, two or three years. And, um, and that includes the park here and, uh, and just uh, Kentucky in general. We're, we're, we're doing some things right and it's really showing on the deer herd. Uh, and uh, so we've got our deer numbers uh, in most areas are about where we want them to be. And our sex ratio is, is very balanced. And we have that older age, uh, those older age bucks out there in the herd. So guys, what he's saying is we got some big bucks in Kentucky, especially in our area. So make sure you call us 800-325-0083 here at Greenbow Lake. State Resort Park, Jesse Stewart Lodge, Green Bowl Gathering. Thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it, everybody. Uh, Hank Bond with the Beacon, People's Bank, Greenup County Tourism, Friends of Green Bowl Lake. Uh, without those folks, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks with another show. We'll see you then. Brought to you today by Factor People's Bank and Trust, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, Greenbow Lake State Resort Park, Greenup County Tourism, and the Greenup County Cooperative Extension Office. Presentation of GreenupBeacon.com, a member of Beacon Media.